It's time to ride again. I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, my, I was getting a little itchy. A day off. Well, one day of paddling a kayak. That, Once to make you get back on a motorcycle. It was work, <laughs> paddling the kayak. I thought the water was supposed to move you. I don't know. You know, we need to find a different river. <laughs> different river. <laughs> Maybe not so much of a lazy river. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But today, what do you say we go to where? Circle? Circle. Circle. And what is Circle? Circle is an old, old gold mining town right on the banks of the Yukon. Sounds great. And oh, the yeah. Yukon is the... It's the biggest river in, in uh, North America next to the Mississippi. That's amazing. Who would ever know? Who would ever know? And we're going to see it. So and an old gold mining town. We're going to go back in time. Exactly. And you know, if we're lucky, we could do a little gold panning. Maybe, maybe pay for the trip. Do we have enough time? We'll see. <laughs> gas may be gas. more of the issue. The gas is supposed to be the gold of the day. Exactly. 150 miles out, 150 back. And we sure hope they're open for gas at Circle over spending the night. Yeah. All right. All right. Looking forward to it. Hey, bye. Yeah. Consistency is great, isn't it? The second we hit the road, it rained again. But like many of the days we had had through Canada and now Alaska where it had rained every day, at some point, the sun comes out, the road dries up, and we get to enjoy the ride again. The road out to Circle was a very curvy road and it was 150 miles out with reportedly only one gas station, maybe along the way. So we were a bit hesitant that the fuel would make it on the day. The road out started paved, but very soon turned into dirt roads because the road out to Circle is a dead end road 150 miles and the last 70 of them are dirt. As we hit the dirt road there was a grader out working the roads. This presented a nice puzzle. As the piles of dirt from the grader started narrowing in we kind of wondered where to go next. Luckily they opened back up, we passed the grader and the road was back to level again. So we continued to summit the Eagle Mountain. So we came up over the crest of Eagle Mountain and looked down in each direction we were about 3,700 feet up. We were up above the tree line, and it was extremely windy. Kind of a challenging ride, but just a beautiful view out from the peak of the Eagle Summit. And then what goes up must come down, so back down through the curves over this old bridge with a wooden floor, and then on to more dirt roads, finding our way to Circle. This would prove to be one of the most enjoyable rides you would have in most of the trip. The dirt road was very windy, very curvy. It went up and down hills and curved around many objects. The road kept changing from pure dirt to dirt with some gravel at some points. But it was very exciting and a, a technical ride for the bike as we maneuvered through the winds and twists to find our way to our destination. We took a brief stop at the summit of Eagle, first of all, to put more ring gear on because it was still raining at that time, and second of all, to take in what we thought was going to be the view, but in reality was the cloud that was passing through exactly where we stood at that time. Here we are in the crest of a hill, and there right in front of us is the cloud that had been with us for the last part of the trip. Finally, we arrived at the Yukon River at the town of Circle. 
only to find out there was really nothing there. There was a hotel being built and one general store open and not much else. And no gas for sale. So we got back on the bikes and went back to a town called Central that was along the way. Central was 30 miles before Circle. Central was where this bar existed and the proprietor was a gold miner herself. Okay, go. So this is the gold from our sluice. So the nugget trap catches all the nuggets in yep. our sluice is 12 feet long, six feet wide. Yep. And then all the other ripples catch all the smaller gold all the way down to the 400 mesh and the bottom four feet of our of our sluice box. So we have dozer, excavators, yep. that kind of stuff. We yep. feed our wash plant 60 to 80 yards per hour. And so we're hoping anywhere from a half an ounce an hour to two ounces an hour, depending on what bench we're on. So, so what is the purity of this gold? I mean, you well, still there's different sources on all the different creeks. Some of the creeks are 87% pure. Okay. Some of this is, because I have a lot of tin on this claim, okay. so my gold will be anywhere from 67% to 73%. So does that mean, let's say this weighs, I don't know, 10 ounces. Mm -hmm. So it's actually seven it's ounces yes. when I'm done. Yeah, which they smelt it, they take all the impurities out, you get you get a, a certain price based yeah. on that. You never get 100% of spot. So, gotcha. but nuggets, uh, most people don't smelt their nuggets. So you get premium prices. You can get up to like 20% over spot for nuggets. Because they're still rare. Over spot, over spot for nuggets. Yeah, because of the uniqueness. Yeah, of the uniqueness. Last no year, way. the biggest nugget we've ever found, and Blake's, you know. Blake's hiding it in his pocket, but the biggest nugget we ever dug up with our excavator was a two ounce nugget. Yeah, and I've already been offered, it was, oh, it's actually going to go into the museum down in Fairbanks. No way. Yeah, yeah, because it's, uh, there's never been any nuggets found on our creek. So, so how much do you think this weighs? This one right here probably weighs. It weighs about three grams. Really? Yeah. 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 That's a teaspoon. Oh, that's yeah, an ounce. An ounce yeah. A teaspoon is an ounce. Wow. Yeah. And, and yeah. so is this is this like further down the slope? Because this looks a lot finer. Yeah. This is what the carpet catches. This is so carpet, this is, is what it? I call um, thirty mesh. Okay. Yep. So this would be the thirty mesh gold. And this is probably like my, uh, this would be my 12, 14, 16 the, mesh. The carpet's catching this too though, The carpet's it? catching this, the minor moss. Yep, yep. So underneath our ripples, we have minor moss. Yep. And it's catching all the bigger pieces. Yep, yep. And then as we get down to the bottom of the sluice, I have carpet. And so the carpet is catching all the way up to the 400 mesh gold. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Super fun. Like Super fun. Yeah, yeah. Just like, wow, yeah, that's yeah, I'll bet. Yeah. So can you say your name and your company again? For um, we This place right here is Skookum Roadhouse. Um, we have a gold mining camp also. So it's Skookum, Skookum Gold Camp? Yep, we're Skookum Gold Camp. Okay. Yep, and then my business down in Arizona is Miner's Depot. And whereabouts in Arizona? In Quartzsite. So Moving we are down. in the very southwest corner of Arizona. We're about 45 minutes north of Mexico. So last year... It turns out the true gold of the day was, again, gas. Gas was kind of expensive. And this old pump, you filled it up, and then you went in and told them how much you got. So we had a long day of riding, lots of technical roads to cover, and an interesting day finding out that there's really nothing left in circle, that central is where it's happening. A good day, found out about gold mining, and another day in the chapter of the trip.